Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing up the Madden cheese as always. Got another uh, full breakdown video for you today. Uh, Madden 20 is about in the books. Uh, Madden 21 comes out in a uh, less than a week, maybe a little bit more. Um, but ultimately, you know, a lot of these plays don't really change from year to year. So I'm putting out all the West Coast stuff that I put out uh, late in the season. So this is probably some of the most updated stuff that I have. Uh, if you want to see a part two out of this, let me know in the comments section. Hit the like button. Uh, other than that, uh, next week I'm going to try to do uh, some stuff about Mutt. You know, when the season starts, when Mutt starts, you know, you need a lot of budget beasts uh, to fill out your squad. So that's probably going to be uh, the video that I do next whenever they release the Madden rating. So other than that, let's go and let's get right into the video. Uh, and I'm going to be using the near close flex. So, you know, this is a formation where it's probably a little bit better known for its run plays. It's got some really good inside runs in it. Uh, I'll put them in my audibles. I mean, the halfback dive is definitely going to be one of them. The halfback inside. And then the third one uh, would definitely be the 0-1 trap. Now, one of the most important things to know about this formation is you want to make sure that you have your, uh, you don't want to have a fullback in this position. You want to make sure, I mean, the Niners have a couple of good running backs. So I want to make sure that I have uh, running backs at both spots. So it really doesn't matter uh, what play I pick because like I said these plays they're all meant to work together I mean this this, this is kind of like running a triple option when it comes to the fact that you can hand off to either running back so I personally find that the run plays in this formation they're all kind of basic they all kind of go in one direction um, you're not going to get a ton of explosive runs like you would out of like a stretch or a toss play or something like that but these are really hard to stop run plays for a lot of people now I personally think that if you go with the halfback inside you definitely have the most blocking uh, you can see I mean I'm running in the direction of a tight end who's going to give me an extra blocker I have a fullback this is the one play you would want to leave your actual fullback in the game if you know you're going to run this uh, and then you can also motion across one of these receivers to give yourself an even extra uh, blocking advantage and a lot of times it's going to help to stretch this play out in the direction that the the play is running to the extra blocking but ultimately, like I said, I don't really think this is, you know, there's not a ton of explosive plays. Not like I'm going to show with some of the pass plays. And if it's a man defense, you're going to pull a extra defender across. So in a, in a situation like this, motioning receiver across is going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be a mistake. It's not something you're going to want to do. So I don't really see a ton of opportunity here. Like I said, my go-to, my default run is definitely going to be the fullback dive. I can flip that uh, just by hitting, the, I mean, I'm going to have a little bit of a bigger hole if I flip that play right here. And then this will help me to get right up the middle. So like I said, this to me is definitely the best run but there's definitely opportunities in some of these other runs and the fullback dive I mean the halfback does a pretty good job of getting to the next level so here we have um, we got the safeties coming down they're probably coming on a blitz uh, so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna try to get a blocking advantage and try to take this outside as you can see I mean I almost had it I made one guy miss I probably would have had a touchdown so if they're blitzing heavy up the middle there I do feel like the halfback inside has an advantage I mean I really only had to make one guy miss and I would have been gone uh, but you can give yourself a lot of extra blocking and get to that next level if you go with the halfback inside. Now you can use either the post drag or the flanker drive. It really doesn't matter. But the flanker drive is a little bit better. I might show them both, but the flanker drive is a little bit better. So since I'm focusing on cover two, flanker drive is going to be the best of the two. So all I'm going to do to make this a really good cover two concept is put the A route on a streak. That's all I have to do. I wish that I could motion out Coleman to the right a little bit and kind of create a three wide receiver set, but I can't really do that. So I have to deal with it the way that it is, which is fine. But both sides of this play are cover two beaters, whether it's Kittle and Samuel or Sanders and Coleman, they're both going to have the same effect. I just pretty much have to diagnose and get the ball out as quick as possible. Because you can see, I mean, ultimately, I'm, I'm right under the line of scrimmage, so I don't have a ton of time. I got to get rid of the ball as fast as I can. You know, that's the one thing about passing under center like this is you can leave yourself in a little bit of hot water, especially if you don't have a really mobile QB. But you can see, like I said, you have two routes that are really going to be explosive. Two routes are pulling coverage and two routes are, are making the play. The A route's pulling the coverage on the right side and the B route's pulling the coverage on the left side. You just have to basically wait until they till they clear. Like I said, I don't like how Garoppolo is really stepping into the... He's not dropping back. Like I said, you really want a mobile quarterback when you run something like this because you want to drop back further than I am. So if somebody's running a lot of cover twos, this is going to be a very successful play. Plus the fact that um, you can't really user this. You know what I mean? Like both sides are having success as I accidentally run out of bounds. If your opponent's running a lot of cover twos and you're and you're beating them with this play, they can't make a user adjustment because they can just go to the other side. So that's one of the things I like about this play is you is you have something explosive on both sides of the field. So like I said, you could also use the post drag, but the post drag is actually a cover three concept. So we're going to pick cover three. 
So this play here, you can see it pretty much has the exact same uh, cover two beater as far as the running back goes as the last play. But this is a little bit more flexible. So if you come to the line expecting to cover two and you get a cover three, there's a couple different things you can do to make this a cover three one play touchdown. You can motion across the A route, put them on a 10-yard uh, out route or smart route, uh, and you're going to have a cover three one play touchdown. Now, if I put the RB route on a streak rather than what he's running, he'll help out a little bit more uh, when it comes to uh, pulling the safety across. But like I said, it's the exact same thing as a lot of cover three one play touchdowns. It's like a hit on a throw because, uh, like I said, I'm under center, so I have to worry about that. But you can see it's a cover three one play touchdown. So I definitely like the first play better, but you see that this, this play has some flexibility where it can hit a home run against a cover two or a cover three. And the last play I'm going to show today is going to be the Texas. Now, this is going to be a cover three one play touchdown, so I'm going to pick a matching cover three look. So all you really have to do for this play, motion out your running back. Uh, that's going to move the safety in the middle of the field. That's pretty much the main reason for that. Put him on a streak, put the X route on a streak, and then put the A route on a streak. That's pretty much all you have to do there. Then you want to put the B route on an out route and then smart route him. And that's pretty much all you're going to have to do um, to make this a one play uh, right over the top. Now, right there, pressure got my face a little bit sooner than I wanted it to. But you can see how the two streaks pull the safety to the left, which is all I really need. So you're going to go to the replay um, because ultimately, I mean, this there's, there's a pretty decent route that this guy's running. But if I want to pull that cornerback down faster, the out route's definitely the way to go. Uh, in this scenario, I probably could have really threw to either side. Uh, but you can see because of this streak, uh, it, it takes away the tight end. So I'm pretty much just shooting for this guy right here. And the second that cornerback stops there, it's pretty much game over. I can just bullet and pass lead outside. And that's pretty much going to be uh, the main cog to this play working. As you can see, I mean, it pretty much just goes right through the gap. But the formation that I'm going to focus on today is the strong close. Now, this is a formation, if you've been playing Madden for a while, maybe going back to Madden 16, you should be familiar with because it's one of the most patched formations in Madden history. Uh, including some of the plays that I myself put out, including the first play that I ever put out on this channel, the halfback off tackle. I'll try to find a link for that horribly recorded video uh, that I made the very first play. If I didn't delete it, I probably deleted it. But either way, the halfback off ta tackle, that was patched. Uh, the PA end around was a play that I put out, that was patched. Uh, also, the quick toss and the wide receiver out. All these plays have been patched uh, because they were all complete cheat codes. But there's still a lot of really good plays in this formation, especially in the West Coast book. So the first play that I'm going to pick is the Y trail. That's a really glitchy play that needs zero adjustments to be effective. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pick that. I'm going to put all these plays in my audibles, which I've already put in. I'm going to show you a cover two beater, a cover three beater, and a cover four beater, all of which are one play touchdowns, uh, including the FL drive at the bottom there. Um, the uh, where are we at here? The deep cross and the PA scissors. All of these plays can be home runs against covers two, three, and four. And I'm gonna show that in this video. So let's start off with the cover two play. So starting off with the wide trail, like I said, this play right here, it needs zero adjustments. I'm gonna make adjustments. I'm gonna show adjustments that really make this play better. But if you're not very good at adjustments, all you need to do is run this play against a cover two. And the route that Sanders is running, you just kinda of have to wait till it gets about 20 yards out. And it's just a completely broken route. You can see how it gets outside of the cover two incredibly easily. The Niners are a good team, but they don't necessarily have a great receiving course. Sanders is okay, but he shouldn't be breaking defenses like that. Like I said, you just kind of wait till he gets past that cornerback, pass lead outside and bullet, and it's just completely broken. So this is a really good route. I've shown this route off in a couple of my plays already. And I don't think there's really too much that I should have to show. If you want to make the play a little bit more of a wider window, you can motion over Kittle and put him on a streak. Uh, this is not necessary, though. And if you do this, uh, your opponent has a better chance of following that over. But you can see how it makes the throwing window that much bigger. Completely unnecessary, though. I mean, like I said, a good pass lead and a good bullet pass is really all you're going to need to get this play done. And since this play is coverage specific, I would say that you can block your running back, you can block your, your tight end, or as many as you really want because you're really just aiming for the X route. But you could also make a couple adjustments to make this play even harder to cover. If you motion over Kittle, put him on a streak like I just did, and then put Sanders on a drag, now you really have three levels of passing that are all going to beat cover two. As you can see right here, I mean, the cornerback completely bails for that drag route, which makes it just an easier throw over the top. That's really all it is. So if you really wanted to maximize this against a cover two, that would be the setup. Motioning Kittle over, putting the, uh, the B route on a drag, blocking all of your running backs, and you're going to have um, the most, you know, the, the easiest version of it. You can see right there, the cornerback bails once again. Uh, but like I said, it's unnecessary. So I would prefer not to tip my hand, just run the play as is, maybe, you know, put Kittle on a streak, uh, and then do the drag at the very least. But don't show your hand. 
the next three plays in my audibles can all pretty much be used as a cover three touchdown because you really just have to make adjustments around uh, the the corner route there or the post route. Uh, ultimately, you're just going to you can pick any one of these. The best one in my opinion is probably the PA scissors or even the PA deep cross. They're probably the two best. Um, so I'll pick the PA scissors. And uh, the adjustments I make are pretty simple. All I have to do is put the A route on a streak, uh, motion out Sanders here, and then put him on a comeback route. That's pretty much it. I can block my running backs in the backfield. Um, I don't really need them to do too much. Uh, and that's pretty much all I have to do. Now, the hardest part about this play is waiting for that receiver to cross the field. Um, it's not necessarily, uh, you know, I like cover three plays that beat up the seam, but you can see how you can beat just about any defense with this formation. That's really the idea. I mean, like I said, my favorite play is without a doubt the wide trail. That's a, that's a cheat code. But if you if you come to the line of scrimmage and your opponents and something other than a cover two that you might have been expecting, you have the ability uh, to hit home runs against pretty much any defense uh, that you're going to see. As I already messed up the uh, adjustments. Now, as far as you know, if it's a cover one man, this is gonna, this is going to work the same way. Um, I didn't really mention that, but ultimately any cover three or cover one man, uh, cover zero, all that, it's going to work the same way this crossing route's gonna gonna have success as I as I right here I find uh, <laughs> I find space I kind of want to roll towards the throw but it doesn't really matter so you can see right there cover three one play touchdown now as far as the cover four plays go I mean the PA scissors and the PA deep cross you can make that make the play I'm about to show you out of either one of those once again I like the PA deep cross the only thing is when it comes to cover four you have to kind of be to the shallow side of the field so make sure you know where you are on the field so like I was saying, the B route has to be coming across to the short side of the field for this to be successful. All I'm really going to do, motion out Sanders here, put him on a smoke screen, and then block everybody once again. And that's pretty much it. The hardest part is going to be getting time for this B route to cross the field. But you can see, once he gets to a certain point, he's really gone, and he breaks right through where the, the one deep safety and the one cornerback are kind of split. You can't put uh, the X route on a smoke route where he is. You have to motion them out to get that option. That's the only reason you have to make that motion. Luckily, like I said, the previous plays, um, you know, had the same motion, so it doesn't really give it away necessarily. And then, like I said, just buying time. A lot of times I'll roll out. You can see the separation it gets, and we're hitting home runs. So in this formation, you can home run cover two, cover three, and cover four pretty easily. Now, the quick toss a couple years back was an overpowered play. It's not very good anymore, in my opinion, unless you have pin and pull guru uh, then it's a good play once again. Toss plays without pin and pull guru don't really work out too good. But if you have it, it's still a pretty good play. So I'm going to set my audibles. I'm going to go to my put quick toss there. The halfback uh, zone is not necessarily my uh, my second favorite play. My second favorite play would definitely be the halfback off tackle. And then the last play that I think is, is an overpowered play is the counter weak. So those are the three main plays. If I wanted to add a third one, I would say that's not really, it's not technically a run play, but it's the PA end around. I would take that as my third play. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll pick that. So those are the four plays I'm going to have today. So like I said, if you have pin and pull guru, this is still a pretty good play. If you don't, I mean, it can still have success, as you can see right here. Uh, I'm actually, it looks like I'm probably going to hit a home run on the first play if I get this guy off me. It still has success. I feel like they might have toned down some of the X factors, uh, some of the requirements for these plays to work. Uh, but earlier in the year, you could really tell that that these toss plays just didn't work unless you had pin and pull guru. That, that's kind of how it felt. But at the moment, I'm having some success. In game, I don't think you're going to have as much success uh, as I've had with some of these other plays. Uh, but it's still, like I said, still a good play. It's just, it's, it's much better if you have pin and pull guru. That's basically the easiest way that I can say that. But to me, the easier plays to run, the halfback off tackle is probably my favorite play on this, aside from the count of week. Now, in a play like this, the way that they're stacking the box on the strong side, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to skip over that, and I would definitely go to the halfback counter. The halfback counter is something that, if you see a gap on the left side in any capacity, it's going to be better to go that way. The the, this, the half tackle like I said, the half tackle is a lot like a stretch. And in a play like this, I could probably stretch it outside and get, get outside those blockers, but the counter week is just going to be that much easier. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pick that. Like I said, this is an easy read for a counter plays. I'm going to go to the replay to show that. As you can see, we're home running to the other side now. As I have Jadavion Clowney chasing me. That's that's two home runs on four carries. Like I said, this is a very good formation still. So I just wanted to go to the replay real quick to show, um, you know, there's one real read you have to make to make this play successful. It's really simple. You just have to watch one player, and that's typically this edge defender. Unless somebody comes in free, somebody misses the block and blows the play up, you're really just watching this one guy. And he's going to do one of two things. There really only seems to be two animations that EA has for this particular player, and that's either read and react or attack. 
Now here he's in what looks like a read and react, where he's basically just going to stop and wait to get blocked. And when they do that, all you have to do is take it outside. You can see it's exactly what I do. The second I see the ball hike, I'm just staring at this guy. And the second I see him stop right there, I know exactly where the play is going to go. And that's going to be outside and wide. Now, if he crashes down, you can't go outside. If he's aggressive and he comes forward, you can't go outside or else he's going to shed, he's going to tackle you. If he comes forward, you basically just have to wait for this blocker to kick him out and then go inside. I'll get a look like that and then I'll show you that again. Like I said, it's a real simple read. It's it's only it's the only read you need to make immediately. Right here, once again, he stops. I just take it outside. The second he gets enveloped by that blocker, I just take it outside. It's an easy run. I want to get the look where he comes forward, though. Go ahead, we'll do this one more time. Hopefully, I get that aggressive look. There it is. You can see right there. That was the aggressive look. I just have to go inside, make a little bit of a juke, and it looks like we're hitting another home run. So, like I said, I mean, this is a very explosive power power run formation. Like I said, a lot of people make this mistake when they run these counter plays where they think they have to go outside all the time. If I go outside right there, what do you think is going to happen? That's exactly what I'm telling you. I run counters all the time. This is going to be a tackle for a five-yard loss. If I try to bust this outside, that's why you have to watch this guy. The second he comes down, he's just setting himself up to get wiped out on what's essentially like a trap block. This pulling block takes him out. And like I said, you have a hole here. You're always going to have a hole here unless one of these defenders just gets unblocked and gets an instant shed. You've got some you know, Aaron Donald inside or something like that. That can blow this play up. But making this read correctly, you're going to see you always have a hole if you follow that one read. So like I was saying, the, the quick toss, good play, just not as consistent as it used to be. Um, the halfback off tackle, in my opinion, is a little bit more consistent because this play, it looks like a stretch play. It's essentially a stretch play uh, with a fullback blocking, a lead, a lead blocker, which you don't typically have. And then the counter weak, like I said, this, this is a scenario where I definitely would try to hit another counter weak, but I think I made my point there. So we're going to go we're gonna go the other way with the halfback off tackle. Like I said, essentially just run it like a stretch. Just basically take your blockers and get wide. Um, there's less opportunity for the guys to break through because there's no pulling blockers like the quick toss. They're, they're really they're screaming at me with that gap though. They're really screaming at me to hit these counters. And like I said, these this counter play is just so good. I probably should try to shake them a little bit earlier. I would have had another touchdown. But if you see a gap like that, like they're giving me, that's definitely where you want to go. Uh, halfback off tackle, like I said, this here. Anytime you see you see a tight formation like this, like they really have outside leverage. There's no real gaps except for maybe one right up the middle. This is a perfect play to run this stretch play. So like I said, they all just get bunched up there, and we're getting outside. Like I said, this is this would be the equivalent of like a dive. You're not expecting home runs here. Your home run big plays are definitely going to be the toss and the counter weak. But the halfback off tackle is really consistent. And then the last play would be the PA end around. Like I said, not really a run play, but this is something that where you can basically just hit this full this uh, running back here. The animation's so slow now compared to what it used to be. That's like the way that EA really tried to mess this play up. Today I'm going to be focusing on um, the doubles north formation. I'm just going to show some run plays today, but this is a really good passing playbook, uh, a passing formation rather. So hit the like button if you want to see the passing plays out of this tomorrow on Sunday. Uh, which I would really like to do. Uh, some home run plays, some really hard to stop plays. This is a great formation. It's one of my favorite formations uh, that they really toned down. As far as I know, it might be in one other playbook. Uh, the double south is in like a ton of playbooks, but the doubles north is hard to find. Uh, some of the some of the run plays I'm going to show you today are not in any other playbook, and that includes the one I'm going to show you first, which is the halfback pitch. Now this play should look a little familiar. Uh, it's very similar to a play that I was out of the gun tight a couple years ago that was destroying Madden. Uh, that play, the only difference between that and this is this receiver here was right next to the tight end. I mean, that's really the only difference. Uh, you know, that play, they patched that with a quickness. Uh, and it's still, you know, you can't even, like I said, you, that, that play I think is gone. This play here you can't even find anywhere except for in the West Coast, which means it's not even available in custom. Uh, but there's really no need for adjustments. You can run this play just like this, and it's going to be very strong. You can see right here, uh, we're having success right off the bat. Not really much that I did right there other than just run the play. You can see I got about 15, 20 yards. Now, if there is an adjustment that I would make, as long as my opponent's not running a man coverage, you can motion this guy across, motion snap him, and give yourself another blocker. Now, I got another another lead blocker out here, and you can see the result's pretty similar, but a lot of times that lead blocker can really come in handy. If you know that your opponent is running a lot of man coverage, say they're running a lot of man blitzes and stuff like that, you can flip the play the other way, motion this guy across, and the, the cornerback will follow, leaving him bare to that side. Now, you can see, obviously, this is not a man coverage, so it doesn't help me out. But ultimately, you know, you can have big runs 
if you know they're running that man coverage. You can make that motion and still have that success. So like I said, right here, best best way to play this is motion this guy across. I use the motion snap, but it really doesn't matter. You can let him get set because some of the passing plays that I'm going to show are going to have the exact same motion. So you can really confuse your opponent what they're going to see. So right here, I mean, that blocking really didn't set up. I had two guys essentially blocking one guy. I would have been sprung. So we're going to do that one more time. Like I said, I'm surprised I haven't hit any home runs yet because ultimately this is a home run play. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to run one more time in the, in the hopes that the blocking sets up the way it should. Sure looks like it is. As you can see right here, this is just leading me to daylight. And I didn't quite have the speed to get going, but that's, that's easy touchdowns all game. So like I said, easiest way to do this, if it's a man coverage, leave it alone, just run it. If it's a zone coverage, motion this guy across. Because if it's a zone coverage, you'll get a blocking advantage. If it's a man coverage, you will not. Uh, the motion block is up to you. You can do that either way, however you want. Uh, but you can see, I mean, the consistency of this play as we finally break what should be a touchdown. Um, it's just, it's just overpowered and over and completely consistent. You should run this. This should be the the, the number one run play that you use if you run this playbook. Now there are two more good plays out of this. Uh, one of which is a trick play. And that's the jet sweep. We'll go ahead and show that real quick. I got my speed guy in the slot. This play right here, man, it should be used in conjunction with these other two plays. The halfback ace power is the other really good run play um, that I would use quite a bit in this. Uh, so luckily it was in the uh, adjustments and I could basically show both these. Like I said, hit the like button. We'll come back Sunday uh, for these passing plays. Some really good passing plays here. But uh, ultimately this this run play here, this 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 sweep uh, from the slot receiver, that's going to be best if you can, if you look to the right and there's no uh, there's nobody in the gap between Kittle and Samuel, that's going to be when it's best time to run this. So let's just go ahead, like right here. This is a pretty decent time uh, to hit him with this outside run. Sometimes you just got to take it a little bit wide because, you know, sometimes that defensive end can linger on the tight end. But ultimately, like I said, right here, this is perfect. They're trying to hit you with a blitz. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing on that side. Um, I don't want to spring it, stretch it out this much. Uh, I'd like to take it up shorter, uh, up the alley there. Because to me, the quicker that you turn up, the less time that it takes for the sideline to become a problem. You can see right here. I mean, once the sideline becomes an issue, the sideline won't miss a tackle. But if I have my choice, I would like to go right in between where Kittle and Samuel are. Now, like I said, there is another uh, run play in the audibles. That's a halfback ace power. This is probably best used uh, as like your inside zone or um, your inside run. I typically want to run it to the other side, not because I have an advantage by any means, but because I really want to have attacks to all sides of the field. This is pretty similar to the quick pitch. So if I run it here, it's just going to get my opponent to the point where they're flowing constantly to that same side. And I don't want them flowing to that side. I want them to think that the ball can go anywhere. So I'm typically going to run it this way just so I can give them something to look at the other way. Even if it's not the most dominant run. Even if it's just a couple yards every time, I want them thinking about multiple things. That's why this is a scheme. So if I have to, and if the hole's not necessarily there, I'm going to still run it this way just because I want them looking at that direction. I want to, I want to keep them off balance. I don't want to constantly run every play in the same direction. So you have your quick pitch, which is your run to the left. You have your uh, wide receiver, uh, you know, end around, which is your run play to the right. They're both obviously uh, dramatic outside runs. Then you have your inside run, which is the ace power. Now, if you do the same motion, it's going to make the play a pretty good play. It's going to it's going to have a very similar effect to it that uh, the other play does. So like I said, you can still do that. But ultimately, um, you know, you have runs to all over the field now. You have a, a wide right, a wide run to the left, a wide run to the right. Then you have an inside run uh, to both directions. So like I said, you have a full attack here. So a lot of these plays have very similar concepts. The wide receiver corner and the bench switch are going to be very similar. But the wide receiver corner at least has that cornerback route. So to me, this is the best one of the two. I guess we'll pick uh, cover two to start. That's typically the easiest way to go. So this play right here, like I said, this is something that... Um, you can do uh, with a couple different plays. I'm basically going to be focusing on the left side with the Y and the X route. If it's, you know, I can, I mean, you can put this guy here on a flat route. You can put the Y route on a flat route and have success with this in the underneath game, just pitch and catch, and then you can steal some yards pretty much all game. That's something you can do. So in the last video, in the run plays, I made use of sand of this uh, motion here, and I'm going to do the exact same thing on this play. So I can keep that flat route that I had with Goodwin. I just now I'm doing it with Samuel. And if I do it with Samuel on the outside like this, he's uncovered now. He's not 
he, he's going to be the first read to that cover two cornerback, unlike in the previous setup, because Goodwin's in closer, he would have been a, a secondary read. So the defense is going to react differently. And the idea here is to get uh, Sanders open now. Now this is to make an explosive play to the X route. So even though it's the same cover two and it looks like a very similar setup, it's going to be different. As you can see right here, that streak pulls that safety back. The flat pulls the corner down. And we have a really big hole. So if I want to, I can do that streak. I can put uh, Samuel on that flat ahead of time, and then I can get like a running start. If I put him in that on the way across, I can get that exact same look and like a running start too. As you can see right here, it basically comes out like, uh, you know, that's almost like a wheel, like a, uh, a bubble screen or something if you do it like that. So there's a lot of things that you can do here um, to get some advantages with this look. Like I said, it's pretty tricky. And if, like I said, if I snap him when he gets right behind those seat, the receivers, you can see right there. A little bit of a bubble screen. Get that exact same thing. We get a nice catch and run. We get it to our playmakers and let him make plays. So there's a couple different ways you can run this play. It just depends on who you want to hit. So if your opponent is usering, say you come to a stop and your opponent knows what you're doing. They start usering that X route. That's when you hit him with the other variation. That's when you hit him with that little bubble screen. Make sure that he's staying down. But you can see, I mean, this is definitely a big lane. As you, I got to, I got to save catch that. Probably want to run that a little bit closer to the other boundary, but it's still a really successful play. And then if you really want to, um, you can put the A route on the streak. It just kind of helps out everything at the end of the day. Um, but there's a couple different things you can do. Like I said, this is something that is really a hard to play, hard stop, or hard play to stop. As you can see right here, I fumble my words and we get a touchdown. Typically, I'd have to edit that out, but since I scored a touchdown, I'm about to leave it in. Now, this play is also really explosive against cover three. You don't necessarily make the same motion, though. That's really the only thing. Um, you're going to be streaking these inside routes, uh, and you're going to try to exploit the Y route this time. So basically, that X route, once you motion him out, pulls that cover three cornerback down. And you can see how easily this is a one-play touchdown against cover three. Cover two, you can do more things. You can still do a lot of the things that you were doing. Um, I mean, you can do like you can have the exact same setup uh, as far as uh, as far as that goes, but you're not going to have that explosive play to the outside, which is what you want. But you'll still have this. So if you run this, if you run it this way against cover three, a lot of times you'll have this receiver, this uh, this um, corner route. But obviously, why would you want that when you can have an explosive play, uh, explosive home run play? So this is obviously better for whatever reason. This defense, I don't know why that cornerback comes down the way he is. I mean, this is just so gone. You know what I mean? It's it's an easy mode touchdown. Cover threes are not very good. I've I've made a lot of videos explaining how they both basically broke cover three, uh, and it just really makes the seams that much easier to hit. Um, you can use the same motion in some other run plays that I showed just to set up this one play touchdown, so it doesn't look so obvious when you pull it out. But I mean, this is just I mean he's gone after about 20 feet. Uh, down the field. I mean, you can just tell that there's just no safety help over the top. It's a good man beater play too. I mean, you don't really need the A and the RB route, the, the running back and the tight end. You can block them. This is an all out blitz, uh, but it's going to, you know, obviously that, uh, that X route there is going to have a lot of success. So any man coverage, uh, the corner route's going to have success. I'm not going to spend too much time going over it. People should know by now uh, that that route works. Uh, and if they use that route for whatever reason, if they're trying to send an all-out man blitz and they're using that route, the B route's pretty good too. Uh, it just takes a little bit more time to get open, as you can see right here. I mean, that's just getting toasted. So you have good routes on both sides uh, for people that like to use man coverage. So whatever the man coverage is, you just block uh, the A route and the RB route. You don't really need them, and you have some really good options um, to the edge. So whatever they're running, all-out man blitz like I'm running here, uh, we'll cover one or cover two. It doesn't really matter, as you can see right there. Probably threw that ball a little bit late. Um, and the pressure got there, but it's still a good play. So another awesome one play touchdown against cover two is the curl drag. I'll pick that next. This is a very unique play with a very unique route. We'll pick uh, the nickel cover two. This will work against some odd coverages like uh, the cover three cloud, the cover six, because half of the formation is a cover two. You just have to identify which side of it's a cover two. Uh, but like I said, we'll just go, we'll pick uh, cover two show four. It doesn't really matter. So like I said, I mean, if you, if you can read which side of the defense is a cover two, then this play will work. You're just gonna motion them across, just like I showed in a lot of the run plays. Uh, this is all you really have to do. And then one of these receivers here uh, has to be on a streak. It doesn't really matter which one, but if you put this one on a streak, uh, a lot of times that'll make more sense because you wanna pull the safety inside. It doesn't really matter, but that's definitely one of the ways to go. And then the B route is going to be the play. As you can see right here, he's just wide open outside uh, because it shoots right for uh, the gap. It shoots right where the area is that's open the most.
like I said, it doesn't really matter which receiver you put on that route. I mean, I just give myself a drag because I want to check down. I typically will block these rece the, the tight end and the running back, although, that, although that's completely unnecessary because this play gets open so fast, you're not really going to get sacked. I mean, that just doesn't happen. So, But it's still a good idea. Like I said, give yourself blocking, give yourself as much as you can. The safety there, he wasn't even threatened. He just knows the streak's coming and backs off. It's just a an error when it comes to cover two. If you want to, you can borrow from the same concept that I was just doing as I accidentally put the wrong guy on a streak. If you want to, you could have all the plays on this side of the field and just put this guy in a flat. He'll still get open a lot of times because, like I said, he's kind of covered up. He's close to the line. He's going to be the last receiver that the defense accounts for. And you can see you really have three different options here. You have three different layers um, just by making these adjustments. So, but I'll just put these guys on blocks one more time. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to go for the home run. But say I guess wrong. Say it was a cover three or something like that. The Y route's going to be then the option, and a really good option at that. But like I said, I mean, it's, this is just like stealing. As you can see right there, my biggest issue is the silent. That's the only defender that's anywhere near stopping this play. So I'm going to go ahead and end the vid there. Just a couple of home runs to go along with some of the home run uh, rushing plays that I put out, out of this formation. Uh, but if you guys want to see more like this, more videos like this, um, out of the West Coast, out of whatever alternate playbook, let me know in the comment section. I'm going to hit the like button. I'll do that next. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.